Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandra Kolta, and I recently completed my PhD looking at the politics and programming practices of human rights on festivals. My research project was part of the ARCS scheme, an applied research framework set up as a collaboration between two universities and the film festival. Document Human Rights Film Festival was my main case study, a focal point for exploring the wider human rights film festival landscape, as well as the everyday work of programming and organizing festival events. In this paper, I will outline my research design, focusing on how I applied practice-led ethnography and autoethnography to the study of programming film festivals and what findings they generated. These methods contributed to the understanding of the subjective, often difficult to articulate decisions behind curation, as well as the creative and emotional labor involved in this process. Founded in 2003, Document is the longest running film festival in Scotland, exploring human rights issues through documentary cinema. While it is relatively small scale compared to other festivals, showcasing around 20 to 30 films over a long weekend in one main venue, currently with a team of two year-round core staff. It is nevertheless a significant organization to study due to its close historical links to the Glasgow grassroots art scene and its international reputation as the only UK member of the Human Rights Film Network. I approached this project as a journey of discovery, exploring document within its historical and contemporary context, using a mix of quantitative and qualitative methods associated with practice-led ethnography, autoethnography, and action research, which were applied gradually as my fieldwork over two years progressed. I started from an outsider position, exploring the wider landscape of human rights film festivals, looking at how they developed in close connection to their local history and stakeholders. I then continued as an insider, studying internal archives, doing interviews with key people, and collecting quantitative data. My role gradually became more involved in the organization's activities, as I actively participated in the programming process as a member of the selection panel and contributed to decisions regarding the festival's output. This approach was informed by practice-led research that focuses on the nature of creative practice, leading to new knowledge of operational significance for that practice in order to advance knowledge about or within practice. By undertaking programming responsibilities, I focused on the tasks and range of activities, as well as on the conditions in which programming takes place. My findings were used to advance knowledge about film festival programming, as well as a resource for the festival to develop its practices and operations. To further expand on the working conditions, I also focused on my own experience and reactions, guided by autoethnography, which seeks to describe and systematically analyze personal experience in order to understand cultural experience. I will start with an example of how quantitative data inform fieldwork and influence the organization's practices. One of the main sources of films for festivals is the open submissions process. It is generally an opportunity to gather a large pool of films to choose from according to a series of criteria. For instance, Documents Ethos is to offer a platform for underrepresented filmmakers and thus provide a submissions process that is open and accessible. However, looking at the quantitative data associated with the submitted films, I discovered a different story. To submit to Documents was free and open to everyone, regardless of country, year of production, or premiere status. Within a five-month window, the festival received over 220 submissions each year, which is typical of festivals of a similar theme and size as Document. I grouped the films by the main country of production. As you can see on the slide, both charts reveal how films produced in Western European countries dominated the submissions for both editions. The fewest submissions came from the African continent, with four films in 2016 and eight eight in 2017. One of the possible reasons for this disparity 
is that Document is a European festival and its profile and reputation were built in this context. This data also reinforces the idea that human rights discourses are a Western construct, as well as the fact that film industries in Western Europe are more developed and thus produce significantly more films. When I shared this finding with the festival team, it sparked a conversation on how to make the festival more accessible and how to encourage submissions from underrepresented filmmakers. The data showed that the festival wasn't reaching out to those groups despite the no fee and no premier policy. Since then, the festival switched to a targeted submissions approach, sharing the call with organizations and networks working with filmmakers and producers outside Europe and North America to encourage a more direct approach. I was also interested in how programming works at a subjective instinctive level and how decisions are made and articulated by the programmers. For this, I immersed myself in the field as an observer and active participant in the selection panel. I watched over 110 films during fieldwork, for which I did additional research, wrote programming notes, participated in programming meetings, organized interviews, and kept a research diary reflecting on my experience of doing this work. Using these methods and tools for collecting data, I was attempting to understand the criteria and ethos that guide curation and which often remain unspoken and unwritten. As you might imagine, this was a challenging task. In interviews, when asked about criteria, some programmers would say, it's open and then there aren't any criteria. Some of the programming notes were also ambiguous as other examples on this slide demonstrate. Thankfully, other programming notes were detailed, focusing on the form, content, or reaction to the films. Programming meetings were also rich in debates about formal polity over content, urgency of subject matter over ethics. Eventually, I started noticing patterns in interpreting and reviewing films. This led me to identify 10 main, cri main criteria that illuminate the programmer's values and responsibilities towards the filmmakers, the audiences, and the profession itself. These represent the main dilemmas encountered in the programming process, and they are further nuanced and established through communication and collaboration. For example, when addressing a film's formal quality, there was a consensus that a distinctive vision Filmmaking skills, attention to detail in terms of sound design and editing were very important. However, equally important and praised were the amateur camera work or rough style aesthetic if they were in line with the subject matter or the conditions of filming. Similarly, a lot of attention was given to the ethics of filmmaking, as the programmers often analyze the relationship with the subject, the claims made in the film, as well as the context of production. For example, one of the points of debate revolved around the level of intrusion of the filmmaker or the use of techniques from fiction storytelling, such as reenactments, animation, using professional actors, or even staging scenes. Through conversation and by reflecting on my own choices, it became apparent that such techniques are justifiable in documentaries when they are done with honesty and with an ethical approach towards, towards the subject and the context. Another curatorial dilemma focused on the spectatorship of suffering. Many of the films we watched presented violence, human rights abuses, and graphic images of suffering. This prompted many conversations around the importance of showing these images to raise awareness and provoke a reaction versus overwhelming or desensitizing audiences. Finally, the insider position offered an insight into the conditions of programming and the type of work involved. While programming is a passion-driven, collective, creative effort, it often carries a tremendous emotional toll. For instance, throughout most of the programming process, the programmers did not know if the funding applied for would be awarded, if they would be paid for their work, and if they would be able to cover screening fees for any of the films selected. The festival staff frequently mentioned feelings of anxiety, thinking about their own and about the festival's sustainability, while the public-facing narratives had to present an optimistic image of growth, constant renewal, and excitement. 
Furthermore, the constant exposure to images of suffering had a significant impact, something which I discovered firsthand. As I mentioned earlier, guided by autoethnography, I kept a research diary during field work where I have written down my reactions to film viewing. This is an extract where I describe the impact of watching a mid-length documentary about the conflict in Syria, which contains footage of dead bodies and suffering children. You can pause the screen if you would like to read the full extract. This extract echoed the countless comments of my colleagues who expressed feeling sad, distressed, overwhelmed by images of suffering while encountering such suffering on a daily basis in mainstream media. These findings made me understand programming as a form of emotional labor, where the programmers have to suppress their feelings of anxiety, anger, distress, to convey the narrative of success for its stakeholders. In conclusion, the study of film festivals requires a multi-method approach, exploring both the quantifiable facts as well as the qualitative details. Ethnographic studies of film festivals have become more frequent, broadening our understanding of the lived experience of a festival from the perspective of audiences or its workers. Drawing on a practice-led approach and autoethnography provides a nuanced understanding of creative practices such as programming, as well as the conditions in which meaning is produced. Keeping track of personal reactions to the work can generate more knowledge about this practice, which in turn can be used as an advocacy tool to promote awareness and action beyond academia. Thank you very much.